We are back for your September market update, but as we usually do, we're going to start with where the hell are we this time? We're not on a boat. We're not on a golf course, even though I dressed for it. I know. We're missing something, I huh? I think that's coming. St I was just manifesting the next video, <laughs> basically. This, this, this week, this for this month's uh, market update video, we're actually at this really cool listing that I've got, 52 Boyd in Camden, Missouri. Um, so we got lake back there. It's a hell of a view. And we are going to show you the house, but not till the end. It's a very unique, what did you say this, 2.7 acres or something like 2. that? 2.65 acres here. There's a total of four lots. This house sits on two, and then the other two have a park-like setting for them. Really interesting community. They have community trash, community water, community sewer, um, fenced-in trailer parking, all that's just right across the street. Really yeah. cool spot. You have Como fiber optic here. I have really good cell phone signal here, which is not always the yeah. case. We are in uh, Bulldog's Cove, right? Mm-hmm. Just right down the... So if you're familiar with that, here. we're on the 32-ish mile marker. Yeah, I mean, uh, the shootout race course yeah. is just right outside uh -huh. the top of the cove. This is a no-wake cove here. It's got 149 feet of lakefront. It does pie down, though. Um, so we are limited on the, on the size of the dock slip which is holding this house back from reaching its top selling point. Also, also though, and, and we'll get to that, priced for that. Like you're not, you, when you see this house, you're gonna be blown away. It's, it's, a, it's a gem. Yeah. Now, I will also say, as I'm standing here, we talked about this last month that, you know, we're, so we are here in early-ish October. It's 80 something degrees today. I know. And so, so if, you're, if you're not from here, from Missouri, I just wanna, I wanna state that, that Missouri's weather, Mother Nature is bipolar here. You can very easily get 90 degree days. Next week, it's gonna be 50s. I've been telling you guys for the past couple of months, October was some of my favorite boating yeah. season because yeah. you still have days in the 90s. Where, you know, earlier this week, it was hot. Um, today, it's 80. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be hot. So this, at the time of this recording, Harbor Hop's coming up. Yeah. I hope, if you're watching this, you participated in Harbor Hop because it's gonna be like 89 degrees on Saturday. It's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. I mean, that's as good as a summer day. Yep. And it's better without uh, the and, traffic. And it's, so it's right before that warm weather is holding back these leaves from changing. This house, you're gonna have an incredible view, but I'd say probably two, three weeks, depending on what wetness. Yeah, if we could get some moisture. rain. It's been a little dry here lately, but yeah. yeah, if we can get some rain, these leaves will really pop and be, be perfect viewing. At the time of you watching this video, I hope you have plans to get down this next week within the next two weeks. That's about your window. Mm -hmm. So when you're watching this video, if you don't have plans to get down here, put it on your schedule, call your spouse, say, honey, we're going down to the lake because I want to see what these assholes are talking about with these leaves. It's going to be incredible. I, and I told you, I'm going to go over to uh, not, uh, Haha Tonka mm -hmm. and fly my drone and just take it all in. Cause yeah, it's that's just so one beautiful. of the best leaf viewing areas around here, Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah, it's it awesome. is. Not not to mention the boat ride as well. And now this time of year, there's there's pumpkin patches. I know Cave has a really nice uh, pumpkin patch. I think Mecca Farms. Yeah, has, we've hit up Mecca Farms. They've they're, got a really cool. They're setup. open every weekend in October. Yep. Last I knew. Yep. Um, they got things to do. We hit this really neat spot last weekend, Firefly Farms, out towards Montreal on Seven for Pumpkin Days. Explain it. It's a farm, on, like like you go past like Three Brothers. Uh, on A, is that no, A? No, out on seven. On seven, okay. Mm. I don't know. They've got honey butter out there. This is awesome. Uh, or cream cream honey butter. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. I know what you're talking about. Apple butter, too. They do that kind of stuff. Yeah, they had, um, Farrah got some face painting out there. They cool. Was, we had to get some special pumpkins, all the things. They had a little butcher shop stuff there. Yep. It was a pretty awesome place. I have to put a link in there. On, uh, comments yeah, on this yeah, we will. so that we get it right. It's a good time of year too to do things like uh, I think a lot of people don't know about that that uh, petting zoo in Sunrise Beach, mm -hmm. where they've got like the sloths and monkeys and all kinds of random things. We I think we Andy talked and about that. Me and the kids that. have hit that spot up before. Yeah, is, is it cool? Is it? I've not been. I didn't make it. You should okay. go and tell right. me about. I'm it. gonna have to do that. Actually, we should do a video about that. I heard it uh, was very very unique. So besides the the trees, besides fall boating weather, uh, this is Chief's country. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great bars that are just a lot of Chiefs watch parties. Um, I there's, there's pretty much countless. So if you're into football, this is also Mizzou country. So if you're not a Mizzou fan, 
Uh, you're probably an Iowa fan or a Kansas fan. Those are the two probably most yeah, prominent ones Yeah, that pretty here. dominates it. Yeah, Nebraska. Yeah, we get some Nebraska. Cornhusker yeah. area. So yeah. in other words, it's a great spot to be because there's a lot of passionate football fans, both college and NFL. Uh, it's just a great time of year. If we just had some Cardinal baseball. <laughs> right I now, love yeah, Cardinal right. baseball. That's right. I was just listening to the game on the radio, actually. There's a game going on right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you're right. Cardinal baseball in the postseason is missing. Uh, the Royals, though, are in. Oh. Let's point that. And they are, I think, up 2-1 in the well, It's either 1-1 or 2-1 in the series with the Yankees. Hmm. So I, I don't care who's playing the Yankees. I'm rooting for them. And I have no problem rooting for the Kansas City Royals. Yeah. Even though they robbed us in 1985. Yeah. Still a little, yeah. still a little We're still, every St. Louis is butthurt <laughs> by that one. Yes. Don Dankinger. Yes. <laughs> Don Dankinger. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's get into the uh, market update, but let's move positions. Let's uh, go show them how cool this kitchen is and let's give them the data. All right. Let's go check it out. We've changed positions. We're in this freaking amazing kitchen with unique white appliances. And I, I think we've summarized this color to be copper, which I like. If you like it, it's copper. It's not gold, and uh, but I like it. I like this setup. You've got this farmhouse sink. You've got double oven. You've got big ass refrigerator. We have a trash compactor that you can't see over here. You've got a really nice uh, uh, range with the Pop with the water. Filler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gas range, exhaust hood. This is nice. This pop is pop-up outlets. Yeah, I mean this is. I mean, you've got kids, you've got family. This is the gathering area. This is where everybody goes. And what you can't see behind us too. So you've got seating for six, actually seven right here, yeah. but then you've got a big ass. Big dining area yeah, back behind Yeah, you. that's really nice. Walk-in pantry. Yeah, it's um, a really nice pantry too. Yeah, this is, a, this is a gorgeous house, which leads us to our September data, man. What do you got for us this month? All right, I've got some interesting stuff. We're gonna start off with uh, single family lakefront homes. Uh, so new lakefront properties this September saw a drop of 6.4% uh, from September 23 with 88 lakefront homes hitting the market. Um, our average, this will really get you, our average lakefront sale price was down 28.4% mm. from this time last year, mm. from September 2023 down. down. That screams opportunity to This buy. month was at $721,303 compared to last September. In all fairness, last September had the highest average lakefront home sale price since January of 2019. So last September was like the million dollar home sale month of the year, of the past five years. Last September, it was just over a million dollars was the average lakefront home sale price. Which is why this September looks uh, so shocking so, from last month. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Let's unpack that. You've got values have come, I don't know if you can say down. They've stabilized, normalized maybe, right? Would you, would you say that? Uh, because last year was an anomaly. Would you call that a young anomaly? No, we're still month to month. We're still fairly trading inside of a range. Um, that last September was really wild how it spiked up like that for the one month. Um, otherwise, we're just down. So year to date on single family home sale prices for 2024 is just under 740,000. So at 721, we're turning down just a little bit from that year to date. Um, even 2023 was at 721. 928 so we're right in line with what it was last year um, this year we've been trending up but like i said we're just kind of range bound yeah but well i mean as we talk about home prices and i get this question a lot from people like when if i'm going to move there when should i buy should i wait or is, are things going to come back i'm going to give my answer and then i want you to give yours my prediction knowing what's on the docket and by on the docket, I mean, you've got this big entertainment center coming right by where you live, mm -hmm. right there in Osage, right? You've got uh, on the vote, which I'm gonna do a post about this year soon, uh, the, the potential casino coming. Uh, there, mm -hmm. And there's possibly two, but one is on the ballot November 5th. Uh, it's Bally's and it's gonna be right down there in Lake Ozark yep. in the quarry area. I know of a potential massive development going potentially in Camden 10. They're working towards that. They were talking, like an entire village, hotels, water parks, Lynn Creek area, back behind, there's 2,000 acres. There's not many 2,000 acre parcels at the Lake of the Ozarks. And then I talked to somebody else who's doing some development over in Sunrise. He didn't give me any details. I don't know if it's residential, if it's commercial, if it's both. Marty. Maybe. But you've got 
activity. And so with that in mind, as you're thinking about when is the right time to buy, sell, whatever, dude, I think in the next five, six, 10 years, you're gonna have a boom here. There's some things going on. There's definitely a lot, you know, just besides the development that's going on here, um, more and more people know about the lake. I mean, look at yourself. Yeah. You wanna be full-time here yep. now. I mean, that's a very common story. Um, we've got, you know, election coming up. So there's a lot of hesitation from people. Do you know that out of the last seven of eight presidential elections, home prices went up the next year? Mm. Specifically at the Ozarks or just nationwide? Nationwide. Okay. <clears throat> so seven out of the late eight, last eight elections, home prices went up. Which one did they following. go down? Do you know that? It, <laughs> uh, do you want to take a guess? Man, I can't even name the last That's eight an easy one. Um, I'm gonna so go with... So in 2008, there was an election. Yep. Would you say that home prices went down or oh, yeah, up in yeah. 2008? That would be the one. Yeah. yeah. That. Duh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that was our one who, year. Who was that, who was that president? Uh, that was the year was that Obama, Obama got elected. Was that his first? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, no, un, that's, that's an unfair, not to blame a person there, whether you just yeah. like or dislike, there we, were, things we were crashing. There were yeah. things in the works before he yeah. got there, but yeah, yeah. that well, didn't happen. Um, so between that, between the Fed starting to push rates down, I know that mortgage rates have still been a little choppy. Um, but all things that are lining up, I think it's going to be a really hot spring. Um, we're seeing some tightening of inventory here on single family homes. Uh, we've dropped on our months of supply. We're currently at 6.4 months of supply. Last month we were at 6.7. So we've got a few few less yeah, homes coming bit. on the market, yep. but that, I mean, it's trending the opposite way the condos are, I can tell you that. Really? Yeah. So uh, we're going to see a little bit of tightening. Usually our biggest purchase times here at Lake of the Ozarks, spring and fall. Yeah. Um, the nation's pretty used to spring selling season. Our area here is fairly big because people want to get one last season out of the lake house, and then after Labor Day comes, we're ready to put it on yeah. the market. Yeah. We'll get an uh, influx of inventory. And so buyers that have been on the sidelines said, we're ready to buy. We just can't find what we want to buy. Yeah. Um, so I would say if you are in the market for a, a lakefront home, um, keep your eye on what's coming up out there. Because I think once spring gets here, if we f see mortgage rates come down, there's going to be an influx of buyers and that's going to push up uh, housing prices. Yeah. So if you purchase now, maybe you can refinance in a, you know, six, 12 months Always. Yep. And, and get a cheaper rate on that and lessen your, your mortgage payment. But if you wait and mortgage payments go down and the housing prices go up, you're going to be in the same boat yeah. and you're not going to be happy. I mean, that's a good opportunity to plug that and say, don't ever buy a house. Coming from two industry veterans here and myself more from the mortgage side, don't ever buy a house based upon what interest rates are doing. Buy or sell based upon when you're ready. And because you know that what rates, rates are going to be volatile. And if you wait, you could cost yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's just stupid because you can always refinance. And so it's, if it's I, right I, for yourself. It's, it, that's the key. It, it shouldn't have anything to do with the rate. It should have to do with where are you at with your family? Where are you at with your finances? Where are you at in your yep. career? That's what it should, what should matter. Everybody has seasons and chapters of life. But if, yeah. if you're right on the verge of that, I would definitely get very serious. Yeah. Um, once Thanksgiving gets here, uh, Lake of the Ozarks kind of gets out of sight, out of mind. People are really thinking about Christmas, Christmas yeah. parties, you know, all the holidays. And there's, and there's a lot shopping. of snowbirds here that mm -hmm. go to Florida mm -hmm. pretty much after, after Thanksgiving a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But even for a buyer, um, the houses that are on the market in that off season, you've got some serious sellers that want to sell. Yeah. You know, they're open for negotiations. They were probably hoping they would pop off right after summer in the fall. If mm -hmm. it didn't sell, they're probably more, more willing to come down on price. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, once we get past January on websites and everything, about two weeks into January, we'll see the buyer activity in home searches start to come back. Um, and then things really weather dependent around here because we'll still have some nice weekends in February. Yeah. If it's nice in Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, we'll get an influx of people around here. I mean, the pub crawl in some years, if it's very nice weather, I mean, it's, yeah, it's insane Grant. how many people come here. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's really about the time, you know, weather dependent, St. Patrick's Day, things really start yeah. to pick up again. 
So that beginning of the year, we start to get the phone calls from sellers. Hey, we're thinking about selling and we start doing some of that home prep um, and get things ready for the spring season. But awesome. it's been a, it's been a uh, you know, still a good fall. Our lakefront homes, like I said, have been on, um, still, still on a tear. We're still getting calls from buyers and sellers, you know, every yeah. day, every week. Yeah. Um, I think I think most importantly too is just just stay tuned in. If you're already watching this, thank you. We you already obviously believe in us, but we're going to continue to talk about the developments. And like I said, I've got a video coming out where I'm going to talk about uh, the casino ballot and and basically what to understand. Not that I'm an expert. I just found it online, literally through a neutral source, and it kind of breaks down. You're not just voting for because actually there's it's interesting, and I'll tease it. The money that would be created as a result of that casino is going towards like. Kids, edu kids education, yeah. If, which you don't know that. All people make this out to be is, oh, it's gambling, which we should be over that by now. But still, um, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm pro-growth here at the lake. If you're not pro-growth, well, you can stop watching. Yeah, and I mean, I guess this is the part where I would be a little bit open yeah. to being controversial. Okay, yeah, um, let's do it. I'm always open for improvement in the lake area. Mm -hmm. um, I. You, you don't know, want a casino? I think anything that is family oriented or anything that brings in investment or more money, um, it's a good thing for our area. Tourism. Yes. Uh, you know, that's how Lake of the Ozarks has grown. And of course, we get, you know, the older mindset of, I just don't want anything to change. And, oh, they developed that's, that. They ruined my generation. Oh, they did yeah. that. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you think that that person, you know, buying that house and putting that up ruined it, ruined Lake of the Ozarks for you, boy, I'd hate for you to ask the Indians because they probably got an opinion way different from yours. That's a great point. <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day because you're right. It's like every generation we get set in our ways and we get really just grouchy about growth. But when you really think about it, we're all here because our ancestors had a growth mindset. If our ancestors didn't have a growth mindset, none of us would be here. We all came from somewhere. Right, so stop and... thinking like, oh, you're ruining the lake because you have options. If you don't like the growth of the Lake of the Ozarks, go to a quieter lake. If you like the growth, well then, I mean, embrace it because it's good for the economy. It's good for the local economy. It's good, it's good for tourism. It's good for the state. There's, there's a lot of good. And on that note, there is Table Rock. And we do have agents that cover Table Rock for yeah. Lakefront Living and Realty. Down I like it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Year to date, uh, sale price was down two and a half percent off from year to date. So just a little bit of a decrease on that. Uh, 59 lakefront homes sold this September, just three off from last September. Uh, our months of supply is shrinking just a little bit. Uh, we're at 6.4. Last month was 6.7. Last year was 4.3. Wow. So we have grown a little bit in that area but we're still tracking we just have more options out there yeah current year-to-date list of sale price ratios at 97.2 percent for lakefront homes so that's still hanging in there really tight current average days on market is at 42 hanging in there tight um, lakefront homes for sale by price bracket uh 300 uh 499 000. we have 37 it's actually down 26 percent mm. from last month uh, 500,000 to 749,000, we're at 49 homes for sale. That's down 21% from this time last month. 750 to $999,000, uh, 41, same as what we did last month. 1 million to 5 million, 80, we were down 8% from this time last month. Over 5 million, we're at seven. One up because of the Bush compound. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> that's, a, that's an amazing property. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it for is. 21 million. Mm -hmm. I'll take two. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually not a bad price when you consider all that you're getting. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, quite a legacy there. It, it, yeah. That too, that too. Yeah. yeah, very, very interesting. Now, it's like the tale of two dogs. Okay. Um, lakefront condos. Uh, our new list listings this September at 101, which is almost up 22% from September 2023. Average sale price for condos was up over 7.5% from this time last year at 347,000. Wow. Sales were down almost 17.5% compared to last year. Um, 38 home, uh, condos sold. Uh, 83 fewer condos have sold compared to the same time last year. 
wow. with 219 more listings. Wow. So it's just kind of one of those dev magnets. We got more inventory and, and less sales. And I've been out with condo buyers. I mean, there's just so many options out there right now. Hmm. Buyers are almost getting the, uh, I forget that it's theory like for choices. Yeah, um, I know what you mean. You kind of get a little overloaded on choices and yep. it's hard to make a decision. Months of supply is currently tracking up. We're at 8.7 months of supply this month compared to 8.1 last month. Uh, last year this time, we were at 3.8 months of supply. Wow. So just a lot more options out there yeah. and, and fewer sales. Uh, current year to date list to sale price ratio is 97.85%. So that's still holding in there tight. I do see a lot of price reductions, you know, all over the board, even with lakefront homes. And once you do a price reduction and you go under for sale, that, uh, that list to sale price ratio is based off that current price. One standout number is the difference in days on market this year at 60 days compared to 39 last year. Wow. So a lot more time on market for those condos. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause you know, we talked about this last month. Mine went on the, under contract within a week. Yeah, we still have, I mean, it's an average. So you still have those ones that, ones that are, <laughs> and we'll talk about this next, ones that are nice and assessments. One that have, um, you know, what buyers would consider a reasonable assessment amount compared to what they have been in the past. Those are getting looked at way more. Yeah. Yeah. Condos available by rooms, uh, two bedrooms, 108 condos out there. It's just a lot of two bedroom condos out on the market. That's up 3% uh, from last month. Three bedroom available, 167. That's up 5.7% from last month. And four bedrooms or more, uh, or no, just four bedrooms, 26 of those are available. Uh, that's up 83 from last month. Wow. Now here's a new stat that I had not thrown your way, but after being out with some buyers, uh, I thought it might be interesting in this one. So I wanted to put assessments, assessments in a price bracket and demonstrate yeah. yep, uh, at what percentage of the market fall into those brackets. Okay. Disclaimer on this, 76% uh, of the condos on our MLS listing are listed as quarterly assessments. There, so 20, 24% of the, of the condos that are listed out there are listed either by month or yearly. Got so it. they're outside of this. So that's 271 out of the 335 current condos on the market are listed on quarterly. And that's what these percentages are based common. off of. Right. So I have four price brackets. Assessments under $1,000 per quarter, 22%. I was gonna say, I, I gotta believe that's a small number anymore. Condos with assessments between 1,001 to 1,500 a quarter, 43%. Okay, we're almost at 70%. Condos that have assessments between 1,501 and 2,000 a quarter, 19%. Hmm. 16% of the condos that are on the market right now over have assessments over 2,000 a quarter. I hope that assessment comes with, uh, you know, monthly massages, things they, like that. If they don't, they should, right? Maybe, maybe even a happy ending. And, <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. I mean, not so awesome, I guess. I mean, I, you know, where I just left, I want to say, you know, I guess the assessments also though, does that take into account? Because my assessment, you know, I had a little bit higher assessment because I had two boat slips. Yeah. So your assessments are going to be based on boat slip size. Yep. And of course, if you have multiple assessment, yep. it goes with that. I assume it's just taking the average. It's just the yeah. average. So some don't have a boat slip, some have two, some might even have three. Yeah. Okay. And you get into those complexes that have more amenities. Some complexes have an indoor pool, yeah. which is fantastic. Gym, you come down here in the center. winter time. Yeah. Yeah. And Pick you're going to pay for that. Yep. Yeah. Pickleball, tennis, mm -hmm. basketball court, all the things. Yeah. So yeah. it's important to know what the, you know, what assessment that you're comfortable with at your price bracket that you're looking for. And then also what amenities do you hope to have? Awesome. Yeah. Anything else? That kind of wraps up what I had for lakefront homes and condos. So well then, well then I think there's only one thing left to do, which is to give them kind of a quick tour of this pretty awesome house. And let's talk about, but before we do that, let's talk about the price because give me the, give me the, the specifics. We already talked about the acreage. We talked about the lake frontage. We talked about the, the, 
limited space. You can have a dock, but you can't have a longer than a 20 foot dock. So it's pretty much a bass boat. A 20 foot slip. It yep. was previously permitted for a 10 by 20 uh, dock slip. Okay. Uh, the, the, the seller built this home from new construction. Um, it was completed about two years ago. So it's basically a brand new home. Yep. Feels uh, brand new. Yep. Had a permit uh, for it whenever he had it built, or actually somebody else did prior to. If you don't put a dock on with that permit within a year, then that permit will expire. That permit, in theory, is still good here, and I've talked to Amron about it because nothing has changed in the makeup back yep. here. Got it. Um, so you could have a 10 by 20 dock slip. It is gonna go dry in the winter, and we're priced according to that. Right now, this house is uh, 4,637 square feet, five bedroom, three full bath, two half bath, total of three garages with four spots for garage, uh, for cars. Um, and we're listed at $900,000. Two, two kitchens. I mean, the basement's like mother-in-law quarters. It, yeah, it is. The mother-in-law was, was living downstairs, had her full you know, garage down there, full kitchen. And it was handicap accessible too. Shower, handicap everything. accessible shower to yep. go in there. Um, they had kids that lived up, uh, you know, lived with them upstairs. Th three big bedrooms and another living room, toy area up there, along with a uh, one shared bath. So really a phenomenal home, listed at 900,000. So we're just under $195 a square foot for almost brand new construction. This house, if it was, you know, just in a cove setting with a straight dock envelope, this house is one five to one seven all day long. Yeah. And it would be snatched up. So it's really ideal for somebody who do, isn't enamored by having a big boat, uh, probably more of a fisherman type, mm -hmm. uh, somebody who's probably not gonna be out on the busy weekends. Uh, you're going to have an excellent view. You have a big house with tons of privacy. You actually have additional lots. I assume you could even do something. There. So maybe that could be something as well. Yeah, you could divide those off and develop them, sell them off, or keep it. I mean, right now he's got everything uh, knocked down and it's more like a park-like setting to it. That's awesome. Let's do a quick, uh, let's do a quick tour, show them around, and then uh, we'll wrap this thing up. All right, we're just going to do a couple highlights of this one. Uh, Jesse, there's a couple things I wanted to show them. Yeah, let's, let's go take a look there. What, what's going on here? It's like oh, a man, secret, thing has it's like a secret room. I know, right? I mean, I would... Nice walk-in pantry. Holy mackerel. That's impressive. Now, when you come off this kitchen, this is what I was talking about. Look at the seating area. Dining area here, open to an open deck out there that is then connected to the screened-in deck. We've got laundry area, garages off that side two, of the house. Two laundries, right? Yep, one on the lower level, one on the main level. This is a huge, huge big living area. Big master, master on the main floor. Big primary suite in here. Big bathroom, big closet. Whoa. Holy mackerel, look at that. Nice, uh, nice shower, huge closet. All right, we are upstairs now. How many rooms are up Check here? Check this out. There's three big bedrooms up here in this big toy lounge area bedroom number one we've got lake view right out there bedroom number two another bedroom with lake view out here Heck yeah shared bathroom here and check out this bedroom the nooks and the crannies that are up here this would be amazing, especially for my high school boy. So he could have a desk over here, bed over there, another little seating hangout area yeah. here. Wow, what a unique room. Ah, just very cool. There's a lot of things you could do with this. I love it. Yeah. Now we'll go check out the very lower level. It lives like a completely different apartment. Let's do it. We have a safe room down here underneath the front porch. Mechanical room, there's two, actually two HVAC systems. One of them has gas furnace, big gas, water heater. Second laundry room down here, half bath. Living, kitchen, dining. Yeah, this is no joke. I mean, another garage. Yeah, so they have their own storage garage. Storage area off of that. Wow. And then they also have their own deck down here. Access to the side of the house, access to the deck and the screen deck over there. And there's, and there's a driveway on that yep, side of the house. It comes down to the garage. Another big bedroom, big walk-in closet. 
and the mother-in-law that had a wheelchair accessible shower. Wow. Thank you guys for tuning in with us. Again, let us know any questions, any of my stats that you have any questions on or something that you want to hear from. I'd be happy to pull any of those for you. Uh, we love hearing from you guys when we're out and about. We got to run into some of our fans at uh, Performance Boat before the poker yeah. run oh, yeah. last yeah. month. Yeah. Um, selling, selling his condo. Chris, yeah, yeah that was selling. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you guys very much for liking the videos. We enjoy doing them. Glad you guys like them. Let us know how we can uh, tailor it to you if you need to. Or don't leave, don't leave yet. Don't. All right, Jesse, how does somebody uh, buy this house? Well, thanks for checking out our September market update for one. And this is 52 Boyd in Campton, Missouri. Please feel free to reach out to me. My cell phone number is 573-260-0868. Or my email address is jesse, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, at lakefrontliving.com. This house is going to be fantastic for somebody. Even the dogs have a little fenced-in area over there. Next month, I'll see you on the golf course. Are we doing golf course next month? Yeah, I think so. All right, I can't wait.